can you see which object here is fake? Did you catch it? Let's show it again. Something in the scene is fully virtual, while everything else is real. If you said the cup, you fell for my trap, it's actually real. However, I have surrounded the cup by virtual objects. In this video, I'm gonna talk about two concepts you can use to blend objects virtually with real footage that I've used professionally as a compositor. Many beginner VFX artists think you only need an HDRI to light your object in a real scene and that's all you do. But this is merely the starting point for CG integration. So technique number one is to paint with light. So there are a lot of concepts that can go into mashing lighting, contrast, saturation, hue. So if we look at our raw render here and we look at these coins, uh, you know, this is rendered with an HDRI, but it doesn't match still. So you can see like, you know, our little pools of light essentially are not crossing over and integrating our coins here. And now you could, of course, try to match all these things perfectly in CG. You could try to do a, a better shadow, but you would be moving these lights around in 3D space. And just for these coins, that could be a pretty time consuming process. So it's not exactly the most efficient to actually do some of these things in lighting. Um, just because you can doesn't necessarily mean it's actually faster. So in compositing, this is really, really fast. So essentially what we can do in compositing is just uh, essentially roto some shapes and track them onto our CG. So something like this would be a, a mix of uh, basically roto shapes tracked on, or you could use 3D position mats to essentially stick on your color grades. Uh, in addition, you could use normals relighting to catch some of the edge highlights. So I'll show some of that now, but basically the main idea is here is we just need to match the saturation, which is a little bit less saturated and the highlights a bit brighter. Uh, some of the angled surfaces are going to hit differently with the lighting and in our shadow, we're going to get a little bit less saturated and also maybe catch some reflections based on the orientation of some of these coins. So if we just look at a few of those changes here, here is the portion of my script that is related to the coins. So if we just take a look at it, essentially it's very simple. There's nothing really complex going on. Now, the CG is actually rendered on one frame because we have a camera that only rotates. It's called a nodal pan. So if you're unfamiliar with those concepts, I check out the Nuke Beginner course because we talk about uh, some of those concepts as well as working in on pre multiplied space. So if you're a complete beginner, highly recommend it. But essentially what we have here, uh, really just some simple grades. So uh, first I'm just darkening the edges here to get a bit more shadow. And again, the context shadow, I always think of shadows in, ter in terms of kind of layers. It just helps me think about it. So there's kind of a broad shadow, but maybe there's a contact shadow that's a little bit darker right underneath. And so uh, next we add a little bit of highlights on the surfaces. Like I said, at a glancing angle, we have the Fresnel effect, but also we have bumps on the surface that will just catch direct lighting. So essentially what we have here is just something like the normals. We rotate the normals. Uh, this this node is, you can find on Nukepedia. It basically just allows you to rotate these. The normals are basically representing the direction that the face is angled, but we can rotate them if we want to get a little bit of an alpha based on if we want to catch some highlights. So you can rotate them around, you just play with these numbers, you get an alpha mat, and essentially you can just plug this into a color grade and then we can just pop out some of the surface detail here. And so I did that twice. Uh, and then in the light areas, you know, that's basically what's happening. Again, these are just roto shapes uh, and all the stuff will be you know, tracked on because we have a single frame that we apply uh, essentially the motion to at the end. So we go through here, we desaturate the highlights a little bit, which is a very common characteristic of highlights. So you usually get less saturated. Uh, so we get like this, essentially a little bit darker, a little bit less saturated overall. And again, playing around with more contact shadows, uh, maybe playing with the reflection itself. We can actually fake a bit of a reflection by essentially rotoing a softer. It's not actually a shadow, it's more of a, a reflection. And so I was looking at some reference. I actually took some photos of gold coins to look at what real ones would look like before I did this. Uh, pretty much the same condition, which by the way is not cheating. If you look at films like Iron Man or a ton of films, they always try to get some kind of real reference uh, and shoot it, you know, or you just try to find some reference online, which you can also do. So the last thing here, a little bit of uh, relighting again, which again, just the normals, but I wanted to catch some uh, of this blue reflection that's a bit in the window. And based on the reference I took, had this in it. So we can just get a bit of that, uh, the light in the shadow area. And that really helps uh, just to blend everything together. So you can see it's just a stack of color grades. But if you miss some of the color grades, this is where people don't really understand compositing. They think it's just like a single color grade. But really, this is what compositing looks like 
in the vast majority of cases where you're dealing with full CG or CG integration, there is these micro decisions that stack up over time. And that is essentially what makes something look real. It's not going to be one color grade or one warmth addition or something like that. So another part we can talk about light hits. Now there's a lot of things going into detailing this book with compositing, but I'll talk just specifically about one part because it relates to this painting light concept. So essentially, if we just roto on some shapes, this is literally just a roto shape being plugged into a mask here. But there's a little bit of a trick in terms of the way that you can apply uh, essentially the grade to this rather than just brightening it up and adding some color to it. So oftentimes you want to think about what it is that you're compositing. What is the material and how is the light reflecting? So typically a beginner might approach this in a way of just taking a roto and maybe brightening it up like this. So we would just take it in a roto and maybe we brighten it up like this and then we add a little bit of color to it. This gives a very flat look, even if we punch this up a little bit more. And the reason this is, is because you want to think about the way the material is actually behaving. There might be some materials that behave like this, and that's fine, but a lot of cases and a lot of times it's actually a multi-layered sort of color grade. And so if we imagine that this is a dark purple book, there might be some small fibers on this book that reflect a little bit differently. And also those fibers are a lighter color than the book itself, which means they reflect more light. So if we think about that fundamental sort of physics-based approach first, like what is the color that's reflecting back? What is the material made of? Essentially, the way that you can break it up instead is to actually pull a luma key, let's say, of the surface, and we could try to get some of those fibers out of the book, and we mask that against the little roto shape that we did. So we use this alpha to grade up first, which is going to break, br essentially bring up the, the little highlights. So if we break this into two grades, we can actually see the difference here between something that kind of can pull out detail and sort of maintain the feeling of lighting versus a very flat looking uh, light, essentially, even if we, if we take some of the color out, we always see this very flat looking thing. I've seen a lot of uh, beginners do the same exact mistake where they're not thinking about the materials and thinking about the way light reflects, which is ultimately what you're trying to do. So technique number two is finding connection points. And this is sort of a methodology that I've constructed where I'm basically scanning back and forth between my CG objects and reality. And I'm looking for every detail I can find. And it's sort of an iterative process to feel, you know, make sure that nothing feels out of place. So if I'm looking at this book, for example, specific things that I'm looking for are things like shadow softness, depth of the shadows, what are the, how, how dark do they go, uh, depth of field, exposure. All of these things are essential things that we need to match. There are hue variations, surface imperfections, texture size, texture sharpness. These are all things that I'm looking around and trying to match essentially. And you know, I, I kind of think of it like scanning back and forth. If I'm looking here, I'm also looking here and making these comparisons over and over and over. Now, to give you a very concrete example in this shot, we can look at it. So one area we could actually get tricked on this is if we're making a comparison from here to here, we could actually get a little bit tripped up as a compositor if you're just looking at this and not thinking about the fundamental principles as, at the same time. Because if I was just making a comparison here to here, we would say that this is much brighter and that that is the, the intensity that this reflection should be. But you need to remember that this book reflects differently. So I had some photo reference of a dark book just like this, and it actually was much darker than the table itself. So you need to rem remember, yes, we're matching things, but we also need to remember the principles under which we're operating, which is if this is a darker book, it's reflecting less light back. A white object and a black object don't reflect the same amount of light back to the viewer. And so that's where you can get tricked when you're trying to match things. So you keep that in mind as well. Uh, it's not just matching, but also matching and then comparing against the things you know. And so another example of this would be this little highlight on the book. So I know that a surface that has been worn down over time, let's say this is an older book, maybe it got rubbed up against other books and you know, over time it got a little bit smoother, which is what happens. If you, if you ever were a kid and you had a rock that you put into a rock polisher and it's a bit more reflective, that's what happens. And so we can look at a reflection like the edge of this book here, which has this little blue speck highlight running down the surface and we can match that we can add a bit of that on the edge using the same techniques I just showed a bit of normals a bit of rotoscoping things like that and essentially just make those connection points more obvious and make things feel more integrated so hopefully those two techniques help you out if you want to learn this kind of stuff I have over 25 hours and a bunch of bonus projects you can go through in the beginner series which is really the best place to start if you want to get into this kind of stuff and get up to that high level with your own projects